recently, but it was before we started doing video. So now people can see your pretty face. Aaron actually complimented you on your beard. You two have very similar beards. That's right. That's actually, why Aaron complimented you because it's a reflection of him. Look, Slater, look right at the camera. That's how you... It's like one way to be a true wildlife photographer, I think. <laughs> you need a beard. <laughs> I have a beard. Exactly. Mine's really I need to close to being up to yours. I feel like it could be so. It could. It's, I can grow a mean one. But the problem is my mustache grows in a lot thicker first. Yeah. So I got to trim it at like half the length for it to be hmm. looking uniform. Anyways, this isn't about beards. <laughs> but the beard podcast. The beard podcast. Yeah, we should start a sideshow. Side show. Um, yeah. Last time we had Slater on... I was going to visit him on his, in the state of California. I went out on his boat and he had the, he had the audacity to get me seasick. <laughs> I think he did it on purpose, but you know, we saw some whales. What else did we see? Rizzo's. And yeah, then I Riz turned Rizzo's, green. Rizzo's dolphins and humpback whale. I feel so bad. You got seasick. He goes, only two photographers on my boat have ever bought, gotten seasick. Yeah, like, normally thanks, people, man. people really, people tend not to get seasick on smaller boats for the most part. I think it's just more huh. of a like, you're in it. Like the bigger boats have a slow, like rocking roll. You know what I mean? So it's not like the smaller boat, you're just kind of more. I don't know. The smaller ones get me, Seth. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't a washing machine, but Ooh. best best sea captain there is out there. Book a book a whale watching tour with your <laughs> with our man here, Slater. Take your seasick well, pills, I guess. <laughs> take your seasick pills. Yeah, yeah. No, it was awesome, man. But we're glad to have you back. And I have some topics for us today. Um, true or false? You have not been briefed on this episode. True. 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 Okay, we're gonna talk about the exact thing you told me not to talk about, which is your one million subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Right. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't That's say you can't cool. talk about it. I just said, is that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank I know you. you didn't. To be fair, he's like, we're not going to talk about that too much, are we? And I was like, you know what? This is a no, great a good, point. It is a good point. You're like, because a million subscribers on YouTube, super impressive, super big accomplishment. But you're like, it doesn't bring me anything. It's true. It doesn't do anything for me, really. I, it's kind of like, I feel like, I don't know how to put it. All it says is that I was able to po or edit hundreds of videos and schedule them to post every morning for like an entire year. And, you know, some of them do 120 million plus views and people hit the subscribe button. It's just not, it's not the same as getting the subscribers on the long form content. Hmm. What do you mean? Like, I just don't think these people are, they're, I don't know. I don't know why they're hitting subscribe, honestly. Like, they're not, I don't think they're like consistent viewers. They're not, they're not like becoming fans, you know what I mean, of your work. I think they just see something awesome and they like it. You know what I mean? Right. And you feel like that's actually worse? I, I feel like it's worse. Also, like, it depends on where you're getting these views from, too. And it's not no offense to the places, but like, there's just more people in some different places. So, like, mm -hmm. a lot of my views aren't from, weren't from United States or They're like India Canada. mostly, right? Yeah. Like a lot of them are from India, which is great. Right. But for like AdSense or like making money, right? It's not, mm -hmm. they're not yeah. paying as much for ads over there. Mm -hmm. I so I guess in an, in, in, in an essence, uh, we talked about this a lot. The reward was you, like you just said, I edited all the time. I posted every day and I yeah. got a nice cool plaque, not the reward isn't the, the one. cool though. Like the plaque, the reward isn't the plaque though. It's kind of a symbolic representation of being committed every single day. Yeah. Right. It's but I think so many people are striving for, I want a million subscribers. I want a million followers, but like yeah. you should be focused on making something cool every single day. Yeah. The plaque is cool though. <laughs> 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 like compared to the hundred thousand, it's funny. Cause when I opened it, I was expect, I didn't expect anything actually. And I opened it up and, the 100,000 one is like, I don't know, an 8 by 12. And the other one is like almost a 16 by 24. So it's like much bigger. So it's like a big black on the wall. Oh, That's really? Cool. Yeah. They give that to you? Yeah. They just, you just like you log just, into you YouTube and time. they're like, you can submit for your plaque. And you just hit some, you just log into your Google AdSense account and then submit it. Instagram Very gives cool. them out now too when you hit a million followers. Oh, huh? really? Yeah. I saw a video, I saw a, a, a reel. And this guy in the background had his plaque. I was like, whoa, I didn't know they did that. Huh. It's a million followers. It's this magician who reveals magic tricks. 
Maybe he <laughs> printed his own. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Magic. But this leads into another topic. You know, Slater and I phone each other maybe, what, two, three times a week? Yeah, when you answer. I answer. He's a answer. Canadian guy that just... You can't even call him on the regular cell phone either. You know what I mean? You have to hit him with the FaceTime audio. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> to be fair, true. most of my day, the phone is like out of reach on purpose because I can't help myself. It's got to be out of reach. It's got to be so inconvenient for me to yeah. go get so that I can focus on what I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I'm just so sucked into all the crap of the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but then you you miss out on his amazing video that he's been amazing videos that he's been creating who oh, me aaron aaron aaron's no, video. yeah we don't need to talk about aaron's videos first it was a six thousand millimeter now it's a one million <laughs> i'm buying one next one's gonna Tony, be like guess, him on the moon he's gonna get a green screen and put himself on set on like the moon or something or i'm gonna be on the moon like wiping the lens for him yeah <laughs> The sad part about Aaron's reels is that I've gotten more likes on my comment on his reel than I have in my last 10 to 15 <laughs> posts combined. My comment on his reel. I get a new notification. I'm like, it's like 3,000 people now like you're... I'm just riding his coattails. It's sad. Dude, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. But you know what? My engagement has gone up, like views on my page, and I haven't even posted anything in a week because people are like, oh, the who's the person who made the top comment? I'm like, like one of those. Dude, like, that guy gets to hang out with Aaron. <laughs> yeah, that guy hangs out with Mr. Mantis. Whoa, so cool. No, I'm one of those. Uh, I'm one of those. You'll know what it is because you're a marine wildlife guy. What's the things that attach to the sharks and clean it? Uh, I don't know. A, some type of parasite. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. A remora, you, a remora, you mean? Off the show. You mean it's like a remora? It's symbiotic, but. Or, I don't know. I don't you know. You could if be a doing... barnacle like a whale. The great whites swimming through the water, and there's just the people they cleaning the teeth and stuff. Remoras and like mm -hmm. pilot fish and stuff follow them around, just typically. keeping a low key. Yeah. Aaron's gonna get smacked by an orca. So that yeah. stuff's cool. That's been in the news, huh? This pod attacking the great whites. Yeah, I think in it's in a documentary. If it's 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 because it came out in that documentary gotcha. um, from Nat Geo. I think there's been a lot of cool stuff filmed out your way recently, Ace Later. Didn't Adam yeah. Erster get the orca pod attacking a blue whale? Yeah, you got to have him on and talk about that. Yeah, it's did you see insane. that? Aaron? I didn't. I don't know if I saw that one. No, it's I think a, he might. He might be. Uh, he has to pull it off. I think. I think he's selling the footage. So he's, for like an I, astronomical I amount. Yeah, of it. like look now. Otherwise, it's going to be gone. Hmm. Um, Good point, sure. right? Because they'll they'll ask for exclusivity, it, right? Yeah, from what I've heard, they've already they already have so. It should come off. Hopefully, hopefully it comes wow. off because that's really good for him if it does. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I saw another article about gray whales spotted in the Atlantic. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I mean, it, like know. you realize these gray whales have to go all the way up and around. All the like way they're up. Going, they're yeah, going, up, like they're going up around the Arctic and going down. Wow. wow. Yeah, there was one also seen. Um, I thought a few years back or something off of like Gibraltar. Um. I have no I idea know. where that is. Uh, I want to say it's like below Spain or something. Uh, I'd have to look, but yeah. Lots of cool stuff going on, though. It just goes to show you got to go out. You know, got to be go out. Got to be out. But you've been trying to change your content up really, lately, huh? And uh, where I was getting it before we got sidetracked by Aaron's amazing funniness. And he's, oh, yeah, Mr. Celebrity there. He's so good looking. He's so funny. And he's so smart. Great beard. <laughs> Great beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um, you've been, uh, we talk on the phone a lot. And we've been talking about how you're, I guess you were, were you, was it fair to say you were kind of getting frustrated? Because you've been putting out such good content with coyotes, mousing, and bobcats, and stuff like that. And it just flops on your page sometimes. Because... Everyone yeah, on your page not, not, is there for whales, right? I'm not, you, you, yeah. I'm not frustrated in the fact that the content's not doing well. I'm more frustrated in the fact of my, like, that I spent so much time devoted to, like, one animal because it's been my job, like, working for whale watch boats, fishing boats, mm -hmm. and then my own whale watch boat. And so I've devoted so much time to one animal when I love all wildlife. Like, we like to photograph, yeah, I like to photograph, we like to photograph everything, landscapes, wildlife, nature. Right. And so, I've just devoted so much time to building a very specific like whale niche that 
I, somehow I feel like Instagram or like whatever these algorithms like knows this. And if I don't put something out, it just doesn't get the reach. If I don't put out a whale, I mean, it just doesn't seem to get the reach. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you almost regretful of posting too much whale stuff or no? Because there probably be a lot of income not, too when there was bonus reels, right? Yeah. Like, no. So that's the thing is it's, yeah, it's hit or miss with whales. Like whales are so unique and I think they're like unfathomable for most people. Like they're really weird. Like, you know what I mean? It's a very unique animal to like go out and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't, I don't regret it. No, I just think that I, I, I the only thing I would do now is if I was starting over and like what I tell other people to do that I see that are like doing the whale thing is I tell them to like mix it up and show like birds and other things that are on the water because it's just like, you just, I think we always, I don't know. We used to always hear like, Oh, stay in your niche, right? Like focus on your one niche. But I think that if you like are more well-rounded, it might be even better, at least for photography. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Then you're not so, boxed in. It yeah. reminds me kind of, of, uh, an artist whose first album is incredibly good. And then their second album is amazing as well, but that's not what got the fans. And you're like, well, what do I do now? Yeah. Right. Do you have those moments? Like, what do I do? Do I just keep on keeping on? Do I start a whole new Instagram page? Do I just say screw it and post whales? And you know, where are you kind of at with this? Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm talking about inside my head on a regular basis. You know, right. I, I love filming. I like, I basically just like using the camera. You do and cars. So, you do the yeah, car, you do the car yeah. show every year. I've been doing car stuff. Been doing a um, lot more. Trying to do a lot more like land animals, especially ever since right. we went to Churchill. Yeah, it's just like so much fun because it's just in general. Like we talked about before, switching more to video, it mm -hmm. feels like there's a whole new fresh. Um, like you can, there's just more for me to shoot again. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Not that I've shot and everything with photos, I haven't. But you know what I mean. Like just right. shots that I've already gone, I can go and try to get on film now, which is cool. Right. So have you thought about just to come back to this? Have you thought about what you want to do in terms of your socials? Because you're not going to stop putting out no. content that isn't whales, and I hope you don't. I've been no, your voice on your shoulder saying, "Don't stop." Like who cares if it gets like ten thousand plays, which is not a lot for you, right? I, I, like I feel like right now I'm going back to. I want to shoot, I want to shoot photos more again. I want to be very hybrid now and I'm trying to change up my profile. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the last few days I've been trying to like bring up old photos and like change up the way my grid looks and split the like photography and video and like do video stuff that has to do with like any kind of animal and do video stuff that has to do with like maybe teaching whales, wildlife, nature, just like fun stuff that I want to create and then keep my photography page separate. You know, and I think that's kind of where I want to go right now. Just kind of separate the two, but still diversify as far as like what I'm shooting. Um, I yeah, don't know like, if I'll bring like cars and stuff to my page. It's just right. it just kind of doesn't make sense as a, a nature person to start showing, mm -hmm. you know, right. bougie cars that people <laughs> ride around in. Right. There's such thing as being too niche and such thing as being too broad. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at your most your last nine posts. You have an owl, whale, leopard. Yeah coyote orca you're also doing i've seen this trend it, like I mean, maybe it's not a trend maybe this is just an artistic choice for you but you're good right now you're posting uh with the matting around the image right yeah the whites it's, what's that it's, about it's def i just i personally um saw like a lot of other photographers doing it and it just looks clean Isn't i think Peter it's an McKinnon easy doing this yeah he's doing it there's a lot so a lot of people that i've now followed in the film like the photography film like 35 millimeter, you know, like that niche are, um, using that mat. I think it looks really cool. I think I don't sell very many prints, which mm -hmm. again, people probably think you do when you got a million, <laughs> million subscribers, right? Right. Yeah, but I don't right. sell very many prints. And so I think it's a cool way to kind of show your photos off as like they're matted, you know, kind of fine art. It does right. look clean. I think it looks clean and classy. Um, Aaron's looking, yeah, Aaron, look what good. do you think? It does look good for sure. I've yeah. always been attracted to that, uh, style. I just always thought, I'm losing yeah, square you are. footage. Exactly. You know? And like, that was the whole problem, right? The whole thing was like, you need to crop your photos eight by 10 or, you know, four by five. So you get as much real estate in your photography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then like, dude, same with video and photos is like, you lose so much of an image. You don't, you're not, you're just shooting portraits at this point. You know, four by five is just a zoom cropped in on an animal's yep. face. You know, yep. you're losing a whole background. Yeah. I ran into a problem when I did my first calendar. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. 
Uh oh, I have nothing. So Are I you had shooting to actually... like portrait on the camera? Do you do that? Yeah. You like so you're holding your camera that way most of the yeah, time. Yeah, I, I take it you're just cropping in then based on you asking that question. Yeah, yeah, most of the time I, I'll just crop in. Yeah, Especially no, my, with my whale, hand was like permanently to. twisted. Yeah. So you know? Yeah. I'm more like Slater. I crop in a bit, but unless it really suits the image. I'm not like Nooch. Nooch only shoots vertical. Really? My wife does that. She 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 like can't. She just turns her wrist every time. Like there's no stopping her. It's just instinct, huh? But it's not even for Instagram. That's just what she likes. Like I think she likes that. Like the top and bottom of the frame. Like uh huh. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like if you're gonna be looking at it on the phone, it's bigger. Unless you turn your phone sideways, I get it. Mm -hmm. But I also get that some photos are not meant for, for vertical. Same with, I I don't know how I feel about filming a video that's meant for Instagram and then doing the turn your phone sideways thing. Like shouldn't it? I just filmed one like that the other day. (laughs) I would just shit on your video. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but no, like, but but why, right? Like, if it's meant for Instagram, why not just do it vertical? Because, like, how am I going to fit a car, like the whole car, Mm. unless I'm ten miles back? Like, even with a even with a sixteen on, I still have to step back a hundred feet to fit a car in. Get no, I get why, but if it's for Instagram, why not just like play by the Instagram rules and just figure it out, even if it doesn't. Screw Instagram. But that's yeah. what you're watching for, right? Aren't you? Where else is it living? Where else is it living, though? Well, so that's the thing, right? Like, what if you're, yeah, if something's like fully purposed for Instagram, and it's for someone's like business or like you know, like that's a very specific purpose. But if you're out filming nature and wildlife and like potentially want to sell it or use it for right, of course, you know, yeah. whatever it is, like I would much rather have the photo or video horizontal because then it's gonna, you know live where it should live, which is on yeah. a TV, hopefully, or on a picture frame. Just being which, 4K so you can crop in if you want to right. repurpose. Yeah, I don't exactly. know if many people, many people And now you that. can just be in 8K. <laughs> You're going to be like, <laughs> now that Nikon bought red, there's going to be some 8K, yeah. <laughs> red, raw, whatever. Sony yeah. has the 8K. I mean, it doesn't yeah, go so does crazy high, high frame rate, but um, what's nice about horizontal in 4K is as long as your tops and bottoms are there and you have your subject and it's moving, you can move and premiere your, yeah. your crop, like where the it needs frames. to be. Yeah. So you're, you're not going to miss sometimes though. Yeah. yeah but you're not going to, you, you might not miss something if you lose the edges where if you're, if you turn right. it portrait mode and you're trying to film something and the car goes out of the frame, it's gone, you know? So, right. and then you have all this top and bottom that you don't really need. So that's right. like, that's not useful. My new philosophy is, to film or f- photo in the the best way it can be used or intended. Like if the photo needs to be landscape, I'm not going to switch it just so it fits Instagram. If the video, uh, what's the best way this video shows the thing? If it's for yeah. simply a reel, then yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to crop it and, and compose my frame, uh, my composition the best way I can with a vertical frame. Cause that's what it's for. And that's, it's where it's, dying no one's gonna buy these funny reels like it's for yeah instagram i'm always stoked to see people that can say like turn your phone and enjoy nature for like 60 seconds and it just like does really well i'm Mm. like man i have so many videos that if i they were horizontal like i have breaches that like start on one side of the frame and end on the other and there's no way like the whale's so close to me there's no way i'd ever fit it in the frame right so i have to like film it how it's meant to be filmed but if I if I post that horizontal, like it's it's just not going to do as well as if it, you know, is posted. I guess just like based on human nature, I'm surprised that the turn your phone method does work. I'd be interested to see. I think it's engaging, like we talk about, right? It's is like, it or is it friction? Oh, I think it's I think it's annoying for some. But I guess it comes down to personality. Like, are you just adding a layer of friction by asking somebody to do something? Well. I did post uh, that video I was actually talking about of humpback sideways and my dad texted me, he goes, Hey Slater, did you know that you posted that sideways? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, nice. you know, yeah, right. That'd be a funny test. The same video, same caption, same hashtag, same account posting the same video. One just says, turn your phone and yeah. one just goes straight into the video the best you can with the crop. But maybe the turn your phone, like Slater says, is the hook, right? <sighs> Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. 
Why do we have to hook people? I watch I watch nature documentaries. I don't have to be hooked at all. I just hit play and watch the whole thing. I mean, there's definitely hooks in that. David Attenborough's voice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just the whole entire thing's a hook. But it's like <laughs> you just wish. I mean, is your is is that because your footage is not so good? Like theirs is just so incredible. There's no way. Like we have good stuff. We have stuff right. that's worth watching. Yeah. You just have to start with the animal eating. Otherwise, you know, mm-hmm. you can't have it like hunting for like I did for a minute, right? Yeah. yeah. There's there's something about the uh, the pause or catching attention from, I mean, think about the just the what people are doing on the phone. The dopamine just scroll, hit, scroll, scroll, boring, boring. Uh, what makes them stop that that exact motion? It's got to be something. You know, some of my best videos of humpback whales lunge feeding are on days where, like, well. The videos that do well will have anchovies like bubbling for, but the thing is, is I'm shooting and I was shooting in like 120. So it's really slow. Right. But there'll be like millions of anchovies and it's like, you know, kind of can't tell what's going on. It looks crazy. And then a whale just emerges. Those do really well. So it's kind of like a hook and you would no almost assume retention. it wouldn't do well because yeah. it takes a long time, but it does well. Yep. Man, <laughs> speaking of back lunch feeding, I have that video that brought me pretty much over like, 600,000 subscribers on YouTube is uh, I reposted it after I said I got my plaque and stuff on Instagram and the comments on it are so funny like because it's in slow motion people don't like like the whales moving really fast when it lunge feeds right so it's coming out it's like the whole thing is only like maybe four seconds when it comes up and comes back down Mm -hmm. but people on the boats in the backgrounds are not moving at all because they're just not moving they're watching and so we were like, this is AI. I'm like, man, if I could AI this, I'd be set. <laughs> like, it's so great. They're like, that person didn't even clap or anything. I'm like, the guy didn't have time to react. It was like three That's seconds so long. Funny. That's funny. Have yeah. you seen the new Sora AI engine with video? Aaron, I sent you this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's what are your thoughts? Aaron, we Aaron and I talked about this. Like, are creators doomed? I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. This is why. So I picked up a film camera and I it's Because of a lot of people, like I thought, I've never shot film, which I'm a photographer. I've been photographing for over 10 years, right? And I've never shot a film camera zero. Like you'd think you'd know something about film cameras, right? So my wife and I picked one up just for like when we travel around for fun to shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. And I kind of have this weird theory in my head that I think we're going to go back to that because it's going to be the only thing that's real. Like Mm -hmm. it's like you're going to be developing. Even then you still could throw it into the computer and edit it. but. I don't know. I think going back to film is going to be kind of a, would, might be kind of a thing to offset the AI for some photographers. Right. But it's just not like financially and like, it's just pretty wasteful. Mm. I think know, it depends film. on what people are looking to use it for. I think there's definitely AI is going to help with a lot of easy stuff, but with people and the story, I mean, you're going to, you're still going to need the narrative and the work. And I think the, the human touch is always, uh, been a thing. I just think about music. Like computers have been able to make music and beats for I don't know decades. The, the AI you know? music that's coming out is crazy. YouTube, remember? Did you guys see that thing when YouTube released the whole like you're going to yeah. be able to type in what kind of song you want and then throw it some lyrics or like type but type in still, what the footage is about? There's still something sterile about it. Or like live music comes back. Vinyl records have come back. Uh, I just, I'm with you. I feel like there's something that's like imperfect is nice about art. Humans like this sort of human touch to things. Well, it's like, why do cell phone videos do? I I, I could show you cell phone videos that have done a thousand times better than things that I've filmed on professional cameras that, you know, it's just like, there's something Mm -hmm. that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Aaron, you and I were chatting about the difference between the AI implications for art and the AI implications for commercial work. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm a marketing department, do I care about the human touch or do I care about it looking as realistic for as cheap as possible? And that's the thing, man. What if, what if like now we're talking about, um, I don't know, uh, what's a big like nature, some nature conservancy and they want to like get funds. And now they're just AI shoving straws in turtles' noses, <laughs> and they're like collecting money, right? Yeah. Like you could yeah, use there's bad it actors some, everywhere. I think you could use it for some pretty bad like stuff, you know, for that kind of you know, in, yeah, in that some sense, deep fakes for sure. Yeah, exactly like that. Who knows where yeah. it's gonna go? But that that footage that came out of it, 
you know what? I actually just saw on Instagram, um, some like curated page posted some guy shot of like, it was like of an eagle or something. And I was like, that looks so like, I could just tell it was AI, you know, but it looked really amazing, but mm -hmm. it was AI. And I clicked it and the guy's full account is just AI animals and they're all in black and white. And they're, they're like, they look incredible. They're just missing that like touch. You can just tell there's like just mm -hmm. a little bit of like softening Something. to it that gives it the art, you know? But man, the guy's, the guy's prompting is <laughs> and his Photoshopping skills right. is crazy. He's got like just underwater polar you. bears with uh, swimming and with ice behind him. I was like, I would, you would think it's real and people think it's real. And not to mention people on faith. Like right now, if you're post photos or captions on Facebook, you're getting paid for it because of the bonuses and you could just be using AI art and getting millions of freaking wait, 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 let's stop there for a second. FaceTime is giving bonuses no, now? No, Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is giving bonuses now? Yeah, they, they've been, they've been, dude, I, you, I wish I could show you my, my, my uh, <laughs> monetization. Like, do I make like a dollar a month? Because I don't post <laughs> captions. Like, it's, it's such a joke. But yeah, if you, right now on Facebook, there's some people have bonuses. And so <laughs> there are four people that like create memes and, you know, do captions and stuff like that. They're testing if, they can monitor. I think they're just testing if they can monetize photos instead of reels or like just regular all basically all types of content. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But it's funny because I'll post a caption that's like, do you like blue whales or killer whales? And it'll make me five dollars. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not gonna write this silly stuff every day. It's not, you know. <laughs> right. So weird. Yeah. I saw a great article about uh when photography came out, painters were going crazy. That oh really? Were yeah, we're paid to reproduce scenes, pictures, beautiful art. Um, they're wow. very scared of their demise with the photog the photograph, which makes sense. Uh, now, everything that we've been doing and get paid for can be done in a click and developed, and these scenes can be developed flawlessly. Uh, yet, painters are still prized to this day, and painting and art is still a thing. I just think it'll, it'll be another tool. That's completely out there. Uh, some will use it way more. Some won't. But I feel like there will always be a need for the narrative, creativity, creativity, even the people that are coming up with the stories or the ideas um, and can utilize that AI. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I may I disagree. We'll I may slightly disagree. Like, I, I agree with you that there will always be the need for humans to be involved in the art form. But a lot of us are employed commercially. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm coming if up you the wrong way. Have a, I know. Imagine like, you're a big company. You can just have a full AI team. Like, you, saying, have, good no, you see two people, two prompters that are like high end prompters that, that, so I don't know. They're still going to need. So let's say you're a good prompter, right? Like I sent you all that we, we were trying to prompt something the other day. Right. And it just is so like a lot of them are so silly, but imagine you're good at prompting, but then you're also just an, amazing like photoshop artists or like you're really good at using photoshop which some people have been for like a long time since photoshop came out and mm -hmm. now you can use ai but then edit it with photoshop and so you're, you kind of still need that human like fix on things mm -hmm. okay so like that might might be a thing yeah i just think some companies will just like some companies don't respect creativity right now and they're looking for free handouts and i'm not going to pay you well i'll do it for exposure like people everyone's different. Every company's different. Right. Every company has a different vibe. Patagonia might want a real nature feel no matter what. They're not going to AI one damn thing. Yeah. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, there just might be these companies that are like, nah, totally that's, fair. That, that's not our thing. We want to do it a certain way. And that's not what we stand for. Our values don't stand for faking people out. Right. So, You're going to start seeing ads where it's a disclaimer at the bottom that this ad was shot using real humans or something like that or was no. used with Sora AI. Uh, only the animals were sure. used with Sora. <laughs> only you know it's like this doctor's not this doctor's an actor like that at the yeah. bottom. <laughs> on the, on the yeah. pharmaceuticals. <laughs> this doctor's an actual human. <laughs> yeah. And an exactly. actor. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well I mean when you stumbled on that person's page, I, I wanted to ask this question. Let's come back to this. When you stumbled yeah. on the AI wildlife page, you said I can tell things aren't uh, you know these aren't real. They're AI. Yeah. And you said, they look incredible. Like, what is your reaction? Do you feel annoyed by it? Are you like, oh, this is cool in its own way? So it's, I think it's sad that if you read through comments, it's just like, you could see it all over the internet. You could find, people will mash up like 
videos about killer whales, right? Like say this, they'll say, this killer whale actually swam 200 miles, went to this boat, told the boat that his friend was hurt. And they'll use like a hundred different clips of killer whales, right? Like from different color days and different, like, mm-hmm. you know, right. just whatever, right? Then the the one the one killer whale is entangled in one video. Then they show a diver from another video and they just mash it back and forth. Dude, I had someone that's like worked on the water his whole life tell me, dude, did you see this video of this tiger shark bringing the turtle to the boat so the guy could save it? Basically, the tiger shark was eating a turtle. The second clip was then someone lifting a turtle out of the water, but he believed it. He's like, I don't know if it's real or not. And I'm just like, dang. This is a professional. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's sad because you can read the comments and see that um, people are like believing it, right? Like there's just some people that aren't as in tune with the internet like we are and yeah. they believe it and then think it's real and they get bad information from it. Uh, but I think there's some things like, I don't know, some of the shots you're like, man, that actually could happen in real life. Polar bears do stand on ice. You know, mm-hmm. it might give you an idea. Like maybe it's it's good for like a shot deck. Maybe you're like, I want to make a film and I don't have time to search through every movie I've ever saw to look through something. And you can type in like, oh, like I did. I was like, oh, I want to see what a bison looks like exhaling in the snow with trees in the background. And now I want like, that's the shot I want. You can kind of get an idea maybe, but now is that cheating? I don't know. <laughs> Getting a reference to a shot you'd like to get? Not really. You're just replacing it with storyboarding, good old yeah. fashioned drawing or. Yeah. Like that's for video, not for photos. But yeah, still, right. I think, I think it's cool for storyboarding maybe. Mm-hmm. But, but oh, what you, is it? you're right about the internet. I mean, even those, well, I think the, the, the couple reels I've done are very clearly, I'm joking. The amount yeah. of people that are like, how's that tripod hold that lens? And oh. Like, oh my Jesus. Oh. I, I, uh, I knew those were going to oh. pop off the second I saw them. Too. <laughs> I knew. I was like, I, tech, I think I texted Seth on both of them. I was like, this is it. Like, this is so fun. It's so true. <laughs> you know, I saw this, uh, I saw this girl. I wish I remembered her name, but she, she was like doing that. You know, all the slow motion pull your, mm-hmm. your camera up, right? Yeah. Which like, dude, I try those first off, those kind of things. They just don't work for me. Like I've tried some, not, I haven't tried that particular shot yet. I guess I need to rent a prime 600, you know, to do it. But, but I saw this girl, she was like, she was memeing up kind of like what you're doing. She's like slowly bringing it up and she's like, no, 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 not like that. It needs to be slower. And then she's like, don't look at me. And so she was like giving herself pointers, like over, you know, a voiceover. And it was super funny. But no, it's like, good. yeah, like, I don't yeah. know. I feel like some of that stuff works for some people. And then I, I go mm. and try it and it's like, eh. Nah. You know, nah. I rented this 13, like you did it. You nailed it. It's like, I rented this $13,000, but man, the shots look great. Like it's not, it's not anything to the people. If it works, it works. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm not against it. I was just searching for what the term would be for when something is more believable simply because it's online. It's a phenomenon, right? Hmm. And it's called digital credulity. Like credibility, like C R E D U L I T Y refers to the tendency for individuals to believe or trust information more readily simply because it's found on the internet. This phenomenon underscores the impact of digital technologies and online platforms in shaping people's perceptions, opinions, and belief. Man. In an age where information is easily accessible and often abundant, digital credulity highlights the importance of critical thinking and discernment when consuming content online. I'd be interested to see some studies as to why why simply because something is published online by anyone <laughs> that it's just more believable. That's an interesting phenomena that I'd be curious to see the science on. You know what I mean? Yeah, that really is. I I, I don't I don't have many theories except just going back to my youth where you would like look up uh what was that what was that machine in the library where you would look up old articles and put it in? It's like the digital encyclopedia? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like a dictionary? Yeah. Let's, time, let's do a timeout here. Um, it's, oh. um, oh, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> You're I, on the clock, I know buddy. I lost it because of the timeout thing. I got all. Uh, <laughs> you thought me. you knew what it was? No, I yeah. just, I don't know. I had something to say and I lost Microfilm it. Microfilm <laughs> reader. Microfilm reader? I don't even know what that yeah. is. Dude. Wait, are you older? Nah, than I don't us? know what that is either. You're dating yourself. Yeah. 
It's old. It's old. I'm old. I have gray hairs in my beard, dude. I don't I'm know old. what a microfilm <laughs> reader is. Dirt. I'm old as dirt. But uh, I, I think like the, the looking up stuff and the what were the first things to be online were just like encyclopedias and, and things that you can put in a CD-ROM and have this encyclopedia. I remember those. those uh, floppy in, disk? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just being plain rude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what I had, we definitely had. I had a hard disk before the floppy, and I had all the things. Oh man, Oregon Trail on the big disk. Nah, all right. the old people are are, are vibing. Uh, but you would like the 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 first kind of digital online stuff was. I remember my parents got like this encyclopedia that you could put in and see like videos oh this is so cool this one has a video of like a whale something crazy uh and you just kind of believe everything you see and it it maybe starts to unfold as like in school look google this and there's only so many articles and uh right. you can look up the pd and then it just kind of yeah. builds it now it's it's just trended to this point of complete oversaturation where you look up anything you might find 99 really good articles about a health concern or whatever but this one article that's made by slater moore from california talking about health and you're like ah, i'm just gonna pick this one and you just assume it's the same as the rest mm-hmm. you know and that's where it can be a little bit dangerous i think yeah, ironically enough, I just punched into my AI program. <laughs> um, like, why does this phenomenon occur scientifically or psychologically? And it jotted out five points. Information overload, mm-hmm. um, source amnesia, mm-hmm. social proof. This one's interesting. So social media and online platforms. If you're verified, dude. Likes, shares, and comments create a sense of social validation that influence individuals to believe information simply because others seem to endorse it. Yeah. I mean, that's been going on since the beginning of time, but I think just the trust in technology amplifies that. Right. What's crazy is that with that sort of history can be made in a sense, like let's say, you know, Slater posts a video and it's, it's questionable or, or someone attacks it and says like, Oh, he shouldn't have said that. The comments kind of dictate his fate. If everyone's like, mean? so if that's someone, att- if someone, Slater posts a video. He says oh. something rude about whales. Let's just <gasps> let's keep it on on the whale. Yeah, he says something rude about whales, and someone goes after him to cancel him. Now, the temperature is kind of dictated by the comments on this. Do they agree, or so they have enough defenders? Yeah, you're full of you're full of crap. Get a life. This is this is mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Like that's not that's not what he meant. Blah blah blah. That defends him, and he's fine. But if you have people that jump on the comment wagon and are like, "Yeah, he should be away," I agree. Then that fever pitch starts going, and now Slater's canceled based on not what he said, but the opinions of what he said and which way the temperature went. And that's an interesting phenomenon too. Yeah, and now he can uh, shoot land animals and get out of his yeah. niche box. I'll tell you what. Okay, I have a couple things to say. One, there's a page called like "What the Fluke," and for some reason, people's facts about whales. There's just they're they're a very hard animal to study anyway. So like the facts are kind of ever changing as we do like people do more and more research on whales. But there's a page called "What the Fluke," and people will like you know share a. I've seen like big pages like uh, Puberty did one where they shared someone's Blue Whale video and they called it a humpback and they were like, you know, it's got, it had like a, a million likes on it, but the video had nothing to do with the Blue Whale. You know, I don't know if that was the exact, that's just an example. But um, anyways, there's a page like that that shares like people make these like serious factual memes or whatever it is. And then, you know, this page kind of roasts it. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, interesting time to live, guys. Interesting time to live. Yeah, that 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 is really interesting. I mean, we know Slater firsthand from one of our friends who says, who knows of, you know, film crews making narratives before they even start shooting. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Like, before they even film a wildlife doc, they already have the narrative. So you're just getting shots to... F- build the house yeah. Wait, isn't that wild? or they or the, or they like have an idea like okay i don't know what if it's just like maybe they don't have that deep of a narrative though like maybe they just have like we want to see like they, they've i think they've been really trying to get killer whales hunting blue whales and they've been it, it happens in bremer bay in australia 
and it's it's known but the water i think is very it's, it can be pretty rough there you can see like the pods are huge pods of killer whales the water is crystal clear blue and there's blue whales but it's pretty rough so i think it's pretty hard for film crews to actually you know, you have to kind of, that's the one thing about working on whale watching boats day to day is like, they're the people who usually see the most insane stuff. It's because they're going every day. Mm-hmm. Like you can send, you know how many film crews have come to Monterey for a whole entire month, April and May, like the last couple of years and not gotten any gray whale predations. And then like the one day they're gone or like whatever it is, we have a gray whale predation or it happens to be like randomly the best one happens to be in June when it's out of that peak window from mid April to mid mid May. So I think people go with an idea like, okay, we want to get a predation, but then they get there and a blue whale has a baby. And now it's like, oh, well, we might as well flip the script because that's never been filmed before. So I think they change it a lot because like, think about this. Um, let's say this certain documentary wants to buy Adam's footage of the killer whale that's, that was harassing the blue whale. Mm-hmm. That, that probably wasn't part of their movie that's coming out, but right. it could be a really big part of their movie because it's, something that's so completely rare to film that is it worth it for them to switch to that concept now and then pump more money into going to like finalize that sequence. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so they get this true. like big, they get this big moment and then might pivot and switch gears and be like, yeah. all right, like now this is our climax or our story and we got to fill in some holes. What holes do we need to fill in? Yeah. And like, we were a perfect example of that when we were all crying because of what we saw with the wolves. Like, yeah, remind right. Aaron again so that he can cry himself. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> I remember. You know. I remember. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen to the last episode was later. Um, I don't know. It was not with me, with Jad, I think you talked. Oh, you didn't really it, touch You didn't touch on it with either of us because you didn't want to hurt Aaron's feelings. You didn't really talk about that. We talked about it in one of them. It was either we the talked about movie, it maybe with just him. Maybe it was with Jad. Jad Davenport. Great yeah. guy. Um, since I've seen you, when did I see you? December? Yeah. Comfortable couch. Great hospitality, I must say. If you're ever going to stay with the Morris. Oh, I think, talking about my futon, I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, you did stay at my house. It did stay. It did stay. Uh, well, since I saw you last, you've, uh, you've landed a couple uh, social media gigs with some companies locally. How did those come about? You're doing Monterey Touring Vehicles, which is a, um, what would you call them? Retro cars, rentals? Classic car rental, Classic yeah. car rentals, a couple whale watching boats. What was kind of your approach to that in, you know, simple form, simple terms um, to generate some revenue for yourself outside of your whale watching business? Yeah. So I figured during the winter, I usually have a lot of free time and I'm always trying to figure out how to like, well, but kind of all I think about is how I can make more money to survive, (laughs) you know, live in California. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, and I, like I said, I was, before I said I was getting more into, or trying to get more into video work. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it'd be a good way to practice and, uh, I like, you know, making social media content. So I reached out to some companies and basically said, Hey, I can create like reels for your Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever kind of content you guys see fit for your company. And I had been going, I had like met them at cars and coffee. I'd been going to like cars and coffee to like meet people around town to mm-hmm. film their cars and stuff like that to practice. And I'd met them and and then built just kind of a friendship with them. And eventually I reached out and was like, Hey, you know, I can make you like whatever. 10 videos a month or whatever it is. And yeah, I just kind of did that. And then I also reached out to a couple ecotourism companies because I've like I mainly film wild animals. Mm-hmm. And so I reached out to them and doing the same thing. And it's been really good actually. I really, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun because I get to create different kinds of content that I don't normally put on my page, mm-hmm. like more interviewee style content or just like just fun stuff that I don't normally put out which I probably should. It seems like it's much easier to do it for someone else than yourself. That's interesting. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think because I have to commit to doing it for myself. But when you're getting paid to do it, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. You're accountable contractually. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe we I should write it. some contracts with ourselves and have horrible, yeah. horrible punishments. That's what people say. I've, I've heard some like uh, motivational things like that, right? It's like, if you were hi- if you were hired, like pay yourself or pretend to pay yourself because Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to hold that, hold yourself accountable for it. I read there's something, the, uh, cool. go ahead, Aaron, sorry. So I, there's something cool just about, I, I think it's like a palate cleanser to do something completely different than what you normally do. You know, you've done thousands of hours of whale editing and viewing and maybe, mm-hmm. maybe hundreds of thousands to spend a couple hours on something that's completely different, uh, that 
just opens up a new part of your brain. And I find that really fun. And you can learn little things like, oh, I'm going to apply this little technique that I learned with my whale stuff because this just opened up a new box for me, a new toolbox. Uh, I don't know. I just find, I find that like refreshing to go do some food photography for a day or concert photography or a cabin shoot, whatever it may be is like different than the usual. And it just refreshes somehow. Yeah. It's a really good, it's also a really good way to like practice making different kinds of content Mm -hmm. and it's a good way to make extra money. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what's also like. important too to note is you didn't just kind of cold pitch. I mean, cold no, pitches have I their did. place. You know, but you're like, <laughs> I, I did on some of them. Some some people I just called, I, I emailed, or like I reached out to. Some people I just emailed, like some companies I just said, hey. I, Even the this, ones that you landed, yeah, or like the ones, a couple oh, of the really? ones I landed. Yeah, I just I just straight up emailed and said, hey, I can make you like. I see that you're. Or sometimes I'll look and be like, oh, I see you're trying to do socials, but they're just very like someone like some random worker is like taking a picture of whatever it is, the food or whatever it is. And I'm just like, Hey, I see that you guys are interested in like growing your social media. Cause you're they're obviously like posting kind of consistently, but it's just mm-hmm. the quality's not there maybe. And I'll right. say, Hey, I can, I can make you like 10 videos a month or something. Right. And, and then, or, and some of them like, will say, Oh, we don't have a budget where, which makes sense. You know, some people it's, it's just expensive. And then I'll say like, we can try it. Because a lot of them, I, I really, I really enjoy, I really think that it does help businesses. Like, it's just a fact. You do get business from social media and it's free. It's basically free advertising besides paying someone like us to go and create the content for them. But the, the right. reach is kind of endless. When you're sending those, are you sending a case study? So like an example of your work or, or you just send um, emails? I wasn't, I wasn't before because before I own my only work is whales. So I'm like, Hey, can I make some food content for you? And <laughs> right. then I'm like, here's my breaching humpback whale or my, right. you know, wolf footage. And so it doesn't really resonate. Also it's yeah. Cause I've, I've had people be like, Oh, but how's your work in like a studio setting with lighting that I don't know anything about. Cause I've always shot right. in natural nature light. And so um, I've, I've run into some hiccups like that in the past, but now I think now I kind of have like a little clientele right now, a small one before I, and I'm going to start running trips again. So that'll slow down because I'll be too full time on the water. Mm-hmm. But I think that like, let's say next winter, if I'm going to help people out or the next time I reach out to people, I'll probably have like a backup now. Like now I'll be able to say like, Hey, here's my portfolio of like food and cars and, you know, interview stuff or, you know, things like that. And where do you plan to make those portfolios live ideally mm, i don't know maybe like a show reel that's unlisted on youtube or something right so, like some highlight reel or just individual like sometimes I just, i've sent people just footage like hey this is like here's a small clip of something i can do you know right not, i think there can be the tendency it. to yeah there can be the tendency to want to make something so polished and so professional and it's got to live on my website and websites have their place of course right there's also something for here's a Google Drive with assets that I made. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so that's Labeled something with I, their 2KA6543 dot JPEG. Like, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes like people don't, maybe like some, I would say most people really just don't care. Do they take good photos or good video that I'm planning on hiring them for? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? One thing I learned on your podcast, actually, I forget the guy's name. I, it kind of came uh, about from him, but it was kind of like, I, I shortened all my emails. My emails were used to be like, so mm-hmm. like, Hey, I'm Slater. I've been eating chicken nuggets for 20 years. I've been doing this <laughs> and that. And like, I have all these things under my belt. I swear, like, here's my, here's a, here's what I would do. And here's a video and here's this. And like, I just give them all of the info up front. And it was like, I just didn't get any responses. So now like I've literally just, and I know it's not okay to like technically DM some bit, some brands, but I've, I've just DM people like, Hey, like, do you want to do this? Yes or no. And like, those have worked better than, me sending like you know yeah. i'm like if you're interested like give me your email and i can give you a bigger idea like you know i right. can write you the whole idea out because then they're at least looking for that longer email or like longer whatever message right and yeah i just think that the whole yes or no thing has worked way better than really then, I, then you don't sit there for two i mean man we were like pouring our heart into these pitches sometimes uh like jason and i you met jason yeah we would write like we're like we'll do all of this for you the whole world <laughs> we're gonna make it happen and then we wouldn't even get an email back and i'm like man we gotta we gotta figure out how to switch it up so right, and likely maybe i'm speculating they didn't even read it they're like 
whoa, that's a wall of text. Or you made, yeah, or you made a video that doesn't make sense for them, but like in your head, you're like, oh, this is just an idea. Like you can change the theme to fit their yeah. brand, but like you didn't have something that specifically you could show for that. You know what I mean? And now they just kind of like, well, that doesn't look like it works for us. Like someone was like, oh, I don't want slow motion syrup pouring on my food. That's not for me. And I was like, well, we don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Right. right. Could, so yeah, sending an know, asset could it, actually hurt you. I think so. I think so for sure. Cause I, I, that happened to me. This lady was like, well, like it's a very high end restaurant. And she was like, well, we don't, she's kind of basically said, we don't really need it. I, and, I, and it's like fair. She might just be sold out. It's in Carmel. It's very nice. Like, you know, right. but she was like, I, I, I would like to try it out, but she's like, I don't know how I'd feel about like the slow motion, you know, like syrup p- pours and stuff like that, which is fine. The content looked really beautiful that I sent her, but it made sense. Like she didn't want yeah. it. It was just, not for her, you know. Not for her. Yeah, it goes to what Aaron was saying a couple episodes ago. Aaron, I forget which one this was, but deciding kind of what theme you want to do. Like, do you want to do handheld iPhone that looks like it was shot by a competent a competent person who doesn't have like a mirrorless or DSLR, but like is very good with an iPhone? Like, do you want it to be cinematic? Do you want it to be just trendy information or information yeah. uh, based where it's giving people uh, value through tutorials. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go and it doesn't make sense, I guess, to, I guess, pitch a company that's clearly trying to go a certain direction. Um, yeah. Or something cinematic or, but it's I guess also- it can be hard to gauge when they don't have a direction. Right. So maybe in that instance, it's like, well, here's something cinematic. Here's something I shot on my iPhone. Here's like something trendy I made. Yeah. Right. And that could be good too. Like if they, if you can find a company that like, like some comp, like there are companies that need social media. Like tourist companies need social media, right? Like whale watch mm-hmm. companies need it. Maybe a safari destination or a hotel. Like they need to be m- m- more. I would say tourists. Like that's the one thing I can almost a hundred percent certainly say. Like they they pretty much need social media to keep up with like what they're seeing day to day, or you know, just uh, to keep updated content out there. It's, it's basically a resume for your business in a sense, right? Or like a mm-hmm. review page for your business. Um, but then some places they don't need it and trying to convince them that they need it, you'd almost be lying to them, right? Right. So you got to find people that, and if you could find those companies that are like, so there's a lot of whale watch companies that are very old school and they still, you know, they've been around since the seventies when whale watching started getting popular and they just aren't on social media that much, but they need, they, you know, they could benefit from it. And you, there's, mm-hmm. there's still companies out there like that for all sorts of different I still think too, like the understanding of business and and the art and marrying those together can be really helpful because any any a restaurant an Airbnb whatever that says oh we're we're sold out we don't need to really market we're sold out okay but maybe you don't want to be sold out seven days a week because you're paying now seven cleaning fees maybe you want to mm-hmm. be sold out three days a week for a higher price. Yeah. Less maybe, overhead. Maybe you mm-hmm. want to just raise your price. Maybe you want more supply and demand. Maybe your 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 restaurant's full, but maybe you don't want it to be full. It's busy. People get mad. They get bad Yelp reviews because they're waiting. They're waiting in line. Maybe you want it to be classy and less busy, but you want more people to try to get in. So raise the price. Make it get out a few people. Whatever it is. Like there's business ways to, I think get yourself still in where it's like they're saying, Oh, we don't quite need that. We're doing great. Well, you probably could do better or always do better. Right. And then you're like, wow, I wish we could sell our chicken tenders online, but nobody follows us. And now our restaurant looks like it's closed. Right. Right. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So Aaron, in that instance, would you say it's what's a better use of time? And this is not a loaded question. I'm genuinely genuinely interested to hear your response both of you is it more worthwhile to try and convince that business that you really want to work for where the line's out the door that they can charge more and maybe have uh less overhead and you know all that that you just described Mm -hmm. or is it better to just move on i think if you really want the client i think one pass is okay if you have a vision of like you're not just making things up. Like you actually have a vision or a case study or, uh, Hey, I took this business, this, let's just use a Airbnb. They, they were booked seven days a week at $300. We went, we like got so much demand that they were able to book five days a week for $500 for the entire year. 
And now they have two days off to clean, make repairs, do whatever it is. Like, here's the case study. This is what I'm trying to get for you. Like, uh, it's great, but we have the potential to one up it a little bit with great media, great content, whatever it may be. I mean, that's the simple version. Yeah. If you really want the client, I think there there could be a pass to be like, hey, can I just say one more thing? And th- this is my vision for you guys. And and they could go like, hey, no, we said no, thank you, we're good. And you go, okay, move on. If yeah, you don't, if you don't really want the client, I think if they say no, I I don't know if you have to really try to prove yourself and like prove that it's going to help. Right. Maybe that's accompanied with sort of like a a graphic that shows the math. That speaks in money, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seven I think days get, a week times 500 versus, you know, five days a week times 1,000. Yeah. I think sometimes if you have to convince someone or a company too much, the problem is, is you might be investing into their company more than they, they care too. about. And so you also, so then like you're doing all this work and you might feel like, well, they don't even care. So like you're putting so much effort in, you know, and then I feel like you're, income from them might not feel like it's good because you're putting all this work in. They don't even care either way, you know? I don't yeah, know and nothing's guaranteed. So if you start showing case studies and, you know, we're going to get this to be f- five day a week business versus seven, give you more time off. It, it doesn't work out. They're coming after you. Yeah, They're looking at you. So it is, it is a bit riskier, but I think just understanding <laughs> the business and where things can go. If they ask like, why do I need new photography? We're, we're booked seven days a week at least to have an answer is, is a good. Also, it's a commitment. Like, like you, you both know that posting on social media, if you don't stay consistent, you drop off. If you post every day, you will start to get the views. You will start to get more shares. You will start to have a very consistent upward trend on any of the platforms. Like it's just a fact. If you post consistently, it goes upward. So like for a company to charge them for like that, consistent of content is going to cost a lot of money. And so, and it, it's also going to take, could take months to start getting traction and, you know, they might not want to spend that kind of money, mm-hmm. which is also really tough. Yeah. Yeah. That just made me think of a question. We had a previous guest a couple episodes ago. I asked quality or quantity. What's more important if you had a gun to your head? So you were just saying, if you post every day, you know, you'll be consistent and you'll see those numbers go up. Do you think that's still the case if your content is simply good or is it better to post here and there insanely great stuff? If it were, you know, if I was, if I said you had to pick one or the other later, I would choose, if I had to pick, I would choose quality um, and lose the followers or whatever the views because it's just like my own personal brand that I, I like my own personal aesthetic, I guess I would care more about. Right. But I don't know. Like, that's the thing is like, that's why I tell people, Going viral it might not mean everything you think it means. You know what I mean? I go viral for the dumb, like the some of my worst content goes the most viral. It's like, or content that I like doesn't doesn't make me feel. Some of the content that doesn't make me feel great, like a cell phone video of a humpback whale rubbing itself on my boat. It's really amazing, and in real life, it is like the most incredible experience you can have with a whale, right? Just mm-hmm. rubbing on your boat for forty five minutes but it was taken on my cell phone. So it's like, what the heck do I have a $6,000 camera for or right. whatever X amount of dollar camera? You know, is it like, it's not as fulfilling that I didn't shoot it how I wanted to shoot it, but like mm-hmm. that video is gonna, it's, you know, resonates with people. It's cell phone quality. It's, it checks all the boxes of like going viral, you know? Yet it's not as satisfying because it but sounds it's to, me to me like, right, because your, your reason for doing this despite your impressive numbers isn't, necessarily to have 500,000 million followers. It's to make yeah. good stuff. And I feel like everything you've said in this episode is I want stuff that I put my heart and soul into to be recognized. It's a bonus if it's recognized with those numbers, but sometimes yeah. that's just not the case. I mean, we got to get to a place and we say this all the time, all the time. And I'll say it again, just so people can really like start to absorb this is that the reward is doing rewards doing stuff even just reminding yourself when you're doing it right and that's so hard to do it's so hard well like i already and i'm a perfect example of that i tried that 30 day like i was like i'm gonna make 30 days of videos and my goal with it was to actually 
put myself on there for most of the days. But then towards the last like six days, I got, I kept having something happen. And then I was just at the end of the night setting up lights and trying to do stuff in my room. I'm like, I'm just, I can't do it. And then I would just post an old video of a humpback or whatever it was. And, but it's funny because I did make about like 12 or 15 reels with myself on it. And I potentially and have a brand deal in the works. I've never had a brand deal and I have, yeah, good have for you. you know, all the followers, right? And that was thanks to you helping me talk back, by the way. So Seth has been teaching me the ways of <laughs> talking to brands because it's just not something I've ever focused on. I've focused right. on my own kind of business. Um, but yeah, like it's, I posted myself for 12 or so posts in, in that month. And I ended up having a couple like brands I talked to. And, but I don't know if something hasn't like fully signed yet, but it could. And that's, that's because cool. I put myself out there in a different light than I normally do, which is normally just you know, wildlife reels. Yeah, yeah. that was really cool. Um, are we well, allowed to talk about I that have, or is oh, it yeah, confidential? Been, no, oh, uh, about the brand, probably not, just in case it doesn't okay, happen. Sure. But but, um, but anyways, like I said, I but the now look, I haven't posted any of myself. And so... Yeah, that's that's interesting because you're like, I really want a brand deal. I really want a brand deal. I have 300 and some odd thousand followers and I've never had a brand deal, which would be shocking to people. Yeah, that's and, what people think. They think I'm just rich. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 listen. <laughs> so your your outcome changed from, okay, let's let's put aside the, the upward growth in followers' views. Let's just put that away in a basket and let's focus on this thing that I'd really like, which is a brand deal. I have the numbers. I have the skill set. Um, I may be lacking in a different area, whether it's like, I don't know, just the, the protocol or the process of email linguistics. I don't know what you would even call it. You, Yeah. Yeah. I would say like email and lingu- like talk. Yeah. Probably okay. talking with brands maybe or pitching them on the yeah, idea. The order know. and the time. Yeah. Like, like, like what to do, say. Do you DM right. them or do you ask them for their email or, you know, how maybe all that kind of stuff. Right. Right. So you said, oh, okay, let's figure this out because I want X. And what I've been doing hasn't been getting me those. So I need to change what I'm doing and changing what you were doing was I'm going to put my face, I'm going to be a person, I'm going to be a real human and it got you your result. And it's just such a case study right there for everybody listening that doing the same thing you've always been doing is not going to get you what you want. You have to change what you've been doing and have the courage to experiment with something different if your outcome is something entirely different than what you've been focusing on. And you're a prime example of that in this. And it led... it hopefully has led to a really cool deal. And yeah, I know you'll smash that out of the park if you sign it. And then you have like, hopefully a lasting relationship. And that's exactly. the whole point. And then it can be, yeah, then it can be exactly more contracts down the road or different kinds. And, you know, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Good stuff. Aaron, how's your camera? Your battery lasting? Two bars left. Sometimes we have to race with Aaron because his Sony decides Dude, to get an Osmo pocket, you loser. <laughs> wow. We're both on the Osmo DJI who will never ever endorse this because they're too massive. No. no. I Dude, like the Sony. Uh, I do an S log and I have to Sony, color correct. Sony sponsor you guys? No. Yeah, they do. As soon as I got this beard, they're like, they as soon as they saw your prime 65,000, <laughs> <laughs> they make Aaron pay for buttons on his camera. Yeah. That's okay. I have, a, I have a question they for do. you guys. So a lot of, you can say without a doubt that a lot of wildlife photographers or whatever they are, Instagram or people, creators that are using prime lenses, does their content seem to do better? There is a certain look to it, right? Like there's that, yeah. there's a, it's just a different look, right? Yeah. How do you guys feel about? It? Do you think like like I use a one hundred five hundred because that lens is thirteen thousand dollars? Yep. Do you think like it, let's say you got the lens, would it change your? Do you think it would change your like views just based on like the clarity and sharpness and like the look of it all? No, no, I don't. I I think those typically people that are going to invest in a twelve thousand dollar lens, that is their passion. <laughs> To your point, they're going out all the time. They're going to an, an eagle's nest a hundred times in a row to get that clean, clear shot or the perfect lighting or whatever it may be. And that's what makes, along with great equipment, but that's what makes a really nice photo or video moment is that they probably have 200 videos that suck 
comparatively, or there's a branch in the way or this or that or whatever. And I think your, your skill and ability to be able to edit in Photoshop and clean up a background or blur things out a little bit or make it a tad bit sharp, but also appear soft. Like, I think that skill can go a long way. I don't think it's a, you need the lens by any means. Yeah. I don't think you, I don't think you necessarily need a lens, but I do going back to those videos of people showing off their gear. I was just you think it, say. Do you think it's more of a hook to show? Yes. The, like, clearly it's old, it's yeah. out of my mouth. Like, I was like, the yeah. prime lens is now the hook. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, so I'm going to rent one from one of these <laughs> rental places and go shoot. Cause I, I found a Bobcat spot and Ooh. it's a lot of fun. And I just yeah. curious if I lift up that stupid lens in slow motion, if it yeah. does better. I it's a prop. It. I was I just going to say it. that. People have been using this lens now as a prop. Yeah, Dude, attach a garbage can to the end of your lens. Yeah, but that's that, I can't. I'm not gonna do it. Be, I, I, you know what? I'm so sad you it. did that because I'd like to meme it like you. But like you already have that. I, I think you should roll with that that shit forever because it's pretty good. Yeah, but <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna rent it and I'm gonna test it. It's just also I've, I've never shot a prime, which is like ever. So I'd like to shoot one of those bigger lenses just to see what it's like. It'll be amazing. I think, yeah. I think for the little bit of help with low light, I mean, that's a huge bonus. Yeah. Cause usually right, wildlife sure. is when it's a tad darker and it's like, ah, the lighting sucks here. And now my ISO's bumped to 2000, 3000, 5000, whatever it is. And you're like, uh, good photo, but it's gonna be noisy. You got to do a lot of work. I think it's, it's definitely going to help there, yeah. but I don't, I yeah, don't you know. just see, you see someone holding the, the ginormous lens in a, set of carousel photos and you're like, and they're like what do you get what do you legit. get what do you yeah. get though i think that's what it is it's like here look at my lens but and they're like what is he shooting with that i think no matter who it is they're like what is he shooting with that and then it's like either an eagle or a, a lion or whatever it is right but i think it does stop people and say like well what is he going to use that big lens for yeah now, like oh this is going to be big good. whale watching it's just not possible which I is think why that's I'm a photo yeah that i think like, that's a photographer's perspective what's he what is he or she going to get with this but yeah. I think the other side, because a, a lot of the time I, I would imagine as wildlife photographers, as nature photographers, the, the photographer community is small. Like it gets to a point where you don't just want photographers following you, obviously. I mean, you want wildlife enthusiasts. You want everyday people who are amazed by nature. And just the fact that that lens is so massive and that the majority of people have never even fathomed or seen a lens that big. Yeah. You're just like, Whoa, what is that? I mean, yeah. yeah. And you kind of get that with lens, right? Like any any bigger lens. Like your I don't know if you got what you what, what you use for as far as your like telephoto Two, lenses, but 200 to 600 from Yeah, is that Sony? Sigma or That's nice. Sony. So okay, yeah. So like those lenses, I mean they're big and white and they flash it. Like they look right. you know, everybody asks well, the same remember, question. Even on my boat when I pull out the 100 yeah. 500 same question. Remember when mm -hmm. Yumi, Jason, and Adam were walking looking for bobcats? And we were and walking with these Jason giant. Got, yeah, we were walking with these giant like lenses. Jason had his full cinema tripod <laughs> and like yeah, C two hundred, and there was four of us. And people on the trail were just like, "Are you guys part of like a Nate?" Like, if people just yeah. stop. They're like, "Dude, you know yeah. what's funny is Jason's camera whole camera setup is probably like three thousand dollars at this point because it's a C two hundred. It's an older cinema camera. And like he is a sick he's a he uses like a, a one fifty to six hundred, which I'm pretty sure is a pretty cheaper it's right. a, a lot cheaper lens than like the name brand ones. And so but he'll get stopped so much. Like it's funny because I'll have like my C seventy with a wide angle that technically costs more than his, than his whole entire setup because mine's just newer. Like the C seventy is a newer version of the C two hundred right. basically. And, but they'll they'll see his all rigged up. And they're like, whoa, is it, what's that for? Are you filming like a documentary and all that? And Right. Yeah. That's so funny. that's my point. Like the whole, the giant lens can be, even when you see people all camoed out, like in yeah. a ghillie yeah. suit, they could <laughs> just be in like a park, right? <laughs> okay. But people are thinking, well, like that person's a professional. They're intense. They could just be in their backyard, right? So it's interesting <laughs> how you can use yeah. wardrobe and props Mm -hmm. For even you can even face paint like two black lines Rambo style, and people are like, yeah. "Whoa, you're just all you're doing is developing hooks. You're developing yeah. hooks for social media." I get that that's also part of the game. Look good, feel good, play good. I mean, I used to think it was all about camo. I mean, look at my profile picture. I'm in hip waders in the water <laughs> like with my camo like lens all wrapped. Do yeah. I need to yeah. be like that? No. Do you do you know, if, can you collab with three people? I think you can, right? Like on Instagram. Yeah. 
Okay, we should do a collab on my boat and like we'll all paint ourselves Gilly blue. No, just like paint ourselves blue or something and then shoot whale and like shoot, like show us yeah, and then show a whale. <laughs> like they don't see. Cause like, it's just like, dude, you don't need that on the boat. Like there's a big right. old boat right next to them. Like they don't care. Like they, not yeah. that they don't care, but you know, like, this is like you, you, the, the hiding yourself doesn't matter to a whale. So right. it's just uh, like, it, all those things don't work for whale. Like whale, <laughs> the whale niche, man, like all the fun you know, ghillie suits and holding yeah. your big lens up. And I'd my like, favorite is that you filmed me on your boat. It was my first time ever shooting whales. <laughs> and I'm like a dog in a car trying to stand up. And he's like, set your, set your shutter speed to one over 3,200 auto ISO and whatever. And just continuous high speed. And this whale breaches out of the water. And on video, you see me go, <gasps> and I go, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta post the video. It's so funny. I'm like a little kid, and he's yeah, he someone who's it. done this every day. Like, does this all the time. It's just like, oh my god. Yeah, it's funny. actually crazy because I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think about it when I'm on the. I don't think about standing up when I'm on the boat. I guess it's just second nature to me. But watching you shoot the whales is pretty funny. <laughs> That's why he got seasick. Being no, it was boat. foggy. He got sick because it was foggy. It got but really looking foggy. Through, and looking, looking through, through the, the camera, camera and yeah, it's just like, oh, like I don't there's know. no horizon. It was a washing machine, dude. Yeah. I've never been seasick in my life until that day. The funny That's thing is, it was me. actually a pretty nice day, I think. Like, it wasn't bad, <laughs> it was right? It not. There was big swells. We almost didn't even yeah. go there. Nah, I would have yeah. loved at least that the other, our other buddy with us. Oh, was you're right. We were going to have me. bad weather like that that day or the next day. You're right. In the afternoon, I think the weather picked mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah. Still, though, you got Rizzo. You, but that's the thing is like people think it's I, – I don't know what people think actually about whales. I don't know. Did you think it was going to be as hard as it was? Uh, I tend to go into things with zero expectations. Yeah. Because if your expectations are too high, reality ends up being yeah. negative. Okay. <laughs> I definitely have right? had some like landscaper tripod kind of people out on the boat that have never shot whales. And then they're very like discombobulated and it's Good hard word. for them to or dis disoriented when it comes to shooting the whales or like, you know, like they're at one o'clock or I I've seen that. So yeah, I think people don't understand they go down too. <laughs> like they hold their breath and go down. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, what was, was very helpful before we even started, you walked over to me, you're like shutter speed 30. Like you saw the whale in the distance. I don't know how you saw it. It was a little blip. Right. And yeah, you're like, okay, we're gonna go over here. that's why it like tail through or something. And I saw the splash. Right. But you're just adapted to, to noticing yeah. that kind of stuff. And yeah. you go shutter speed 3,200, blah, 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 get ready, burst. It's going to go over here. Be ready. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that you just saved me half an hour of tinkering. I probably wouldn't have gotten those whale shots that I did yeah. if Especially it wasn't if like, for your expertise. Yeah. And there's something about, I could have walked onto your boat and said, oh, I know my gear. I'm a wildlife mm -hmm. photographer. This can't be that hard, whatever. I've been on boats before. But I think in this instance, having a level of humility, knowing you're the expert and just saying, I'm going to do what Slater tells me to do. Because despite my knowledge, he's the pro in this out on the ocean. And, you know, had I had let my ego get in the way and just, I know what I'm doing, I would have missed those shots. Yeah. So there's something to be said for that. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. It's just, I don't, I actually don't shoot auto ISO, um, but that's only my own thing. I, most people I do that shoot on the water, no, shoot that shoot on the water, shoot auto. Cause it makes sense, right? Like if the whale is on one side front lit and then you go and then it's back lit and it jumps like you know, scrolling, but I, my ISO is on my thumb. So I don't know. I just kind of scroll it a lot. I feel like, especially if it's foggy, like you can't have your ISO high because then it like just blows out. So you kind of have to like actually drop your ISO a lot. Like sometimes I'll drop to like a yeah. hundred. I shoot. think you told me what yeah. ISO to do now that I'm thinking, yeah. I don't think I did ISO. I think you were telling me all these settings. And well, like, auto yes, is sir, a lot of people shoot auto. It makes sense. Especially with wild. I think in general, people shoot auto for wildlife. Just yeah, because and then you can adjust. Yeah, then you, yeah, and you just set your minimum and maximum ISO range, right? Which is so helpful. How crazy is that? You just set your ISO range. You can do whatever you want with cameras. So yeah. crazy. It's true. Oh, I was wondering I, if I, I could get a, a stats on what percent of the camera I use. You know, in terms of data or tinkering, how like how much, how many menu oh, items yeah. there are, and like what percent do I oh, actually man. utilize? Five, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder. Right. Once I you set it to like, five. yeah. Like, what do you even change in there besides like once you, okay, let's say for, for, for photos, you're setting it to raw and then you're, you're, I don't know if you're the Sony has like, you can set it to different things like animal tracking, right. Or car tracking or people. So mm -hmm. you set it to animal. And then other yeah. than that, I don't know what else, go. spot metering or like, I don't know what, other, like 
evaluative metering and that's it. I don't know. <laughs> like, does the A7R5 have bird tracking, like animal specific? Yeah. yeah. Wow. See, that's, that's the thing about Sony is the tracking bird is so crazy. And animal, and then you can do an animal bird combo. That actually uh, brings up a question I have. So, you know how the A9 III came out and it has like the million yeah. FPS and all that? Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? I saw this I saw this video on Instagram and the guy was just like holding it down and it's like a whole soccer game or whatever it was. And the guy and a, a lot of the comments and that's where I got the whole like going back to film thing was like someone said on there like you're not even composing your shot though. You're just blasting on auto auto focus and a million frames a second and you're just mm-hmm. then you're going to go back and look through and crop and edit. You know what I mean? Like I don't know, does that is that kind of take the photography out of it and like lining up your shot in a way i guess yeah but, yeah. yeah i super helpful I right? like you know. bird photography for, for example there there's nothing <laughs> more frustrating and rewarding than having a bird in sight on a branch and waiting for it to take off yeah and then you get tired and you put mm-hmm. your camera down and then it takes off <laughs> like <laughs> that that's a real thing but now yeah. there's like this, you know, second before, second after buffer that before you even press the shutter, it has memory and it's taking photos. So you're not, you're not going to miss that God. point. So I don't, that's not as exciting to me. Now, if it's your livelihood to capture those moments, then I, yeah. I guess it's really useful and really worthwhile. But there, I like the game of like, ah, oh, damn it, I missed it by one frame, or like, yeah, miss, you know. And then, then times that you get it, it's so so rewarding. I think that that camera is unbelievable for um, photos, but for video, like the yeah, for photos, the thing is, like for me, if a whale breaches, you you kind of want that peak of the you like you want it fully out of the water, back turned, you know, like you want that peak of the breach. So mm-hmm. you can almost be delayed as a photo. You can be delayed. But for video, you can't be delayed. You've had have already started recording, so you need now you need a whale that's con- consecutively breaching over and over, and then you have to like choose where it's going to breach at the next time and hope that it breaches in your frame and not half in your frame or half going out of your frame. So I think for a video like that pre roll stuff is going to be hu- is huge, right? Yeah. Like R- Red has it. Um, there's I th- my C seventy technically has it, I think, uh, but I don't use it. I haven't but, used I mean, it. The Sony uh, does one hundred and twenty clicks per second. You know, so you're basically making a slow motion film and super high quality, which does look you, really cool. That you can I, put I've it seen all some together. people post that it does look pretty. It's, it's a pretty fun, like real to make. I think the uh, I think the payoff though, or the um, the crux of it is the megapixels are small. It right, it's like yeah. it's only twenty four megapixels. Oh yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> Even and, though that's and like the, and the light dynamics so like aren't as great as some of the other ones as a rolling shutter. Yeah. What camera? Mechanical. What do you Shut what, up, what do you shoot on? A seven four R four five R five. Okay. What do you and what do you have, Seth? The A seven three right now. Yeah, which is a really good camera too. Yeah. What do you guys? Do you guys think we're gonna just? I don't know. What's the, I, there's already like medium format camera. Like there's cameras with 100 megapixels right now, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Is that just what it's gonna get to? Because it's, it's it's gonna stop at some point, and it's just gonna be really nice glass and. It's going to be like, we're just going to like autofocuses will get better. Things like that. Like, where are we going to end with photography? That it's like, it's just, there's not much else you can do other than it's going to become the, it's going to come back to the artist or it's going to be, it's going to bring it so available to the masses, which it already is right. Like someone can pick up a camera and if they go for it within months, you can be like, you're a good photographer. Like it, it or you have clean shots now. You have clean you, shots. Yeah, so, exactly. Or you might have an eye for it. You might dive into the editing. You might get a style, and it, it looks it looks good. And I'm sure you're going to improve, but like pretty quickly, you can be decent if you have the gear and you have the desire to be good. Like there's yeah. YouTube things everywhere. There's I can Instagram any photographer on here, and maybe they reply to me and give me some tips. You know, like it's it's much easier than it used to be 30 years ago, 40 years ago to be like, you know, photography. Oh, I have to go to a dark room and, and edit my, like, give me a break. Like no one knows what that, yeah. I don't know what that means now. Like how, how I would, couldn't walk my way around a dark room without hitting into a wall. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's just a different story. I think it comes back to the human and the artist and the like, I'm going to set up this shot. I'm going to create this narrative. I'm going to, 
I have this idea that I want to capture. And I think that's the stuff that shines through. Yeah. A lot. And then, then there's a whole there's a whole layer below that that's like nah, I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily my style. There's this Instagram guy. Is it Jordy Kolek? Kol- Kol- uh he does all the cool ass videos yeah. that are just like um they're just tricky like plays on Jordy Kolidic, yeah. Kolidic, thank you. Kolidic. Uh, Kolidic, Kolidic. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, colitic. Um, they're just such cool videos, and almost every one that he puts out, I'm like, oh, what a simple but great idea. They're like, they're just really, really smart, and you can tell. And he's doing a lot of it on a cell phone. What is it? What are the videos about? Nah, they're just they're just artistic, engaging, abstract. Yeah. Man, I, I found the- this page. The, the kicker day. is there's so much behind the scenes footage. Yeah, that's what he that's does. that's the interesting part, and that's the to what we were talking about. If, if gear is just so becomes so good that everyone can just about hit that level of uh, that high caliber, being able to either a showcase the human element behind it, yeah, and or b. Uh, you know, actually purposefully take a step back with quality of gear and get a near similar result will be admirable, right? In mm-hmm. 10 years from now, if you go and you grab a DSLR and you make something crazy and you film behind the scenes, hey, I'm using a DSLR. People will be like, whoa, that's amazing for that archaic camera. Yeah. Right? Also, back to Slater's point, I think the people that actually go out every day to get that perfect uh, orca shot that rare yeah. thing you're not doesn't matter what camera you have you're like you're going to get it but the work the thousand of days before that that you went out and didn't get crap that's what's going to be rewarded there's gonna be a whole bunch of camera people that like just think going out into the wildlife is doing those cool reels and you're, you're in the woods and you're full you know uh full garb and and that's what's going to happen and then you're going to see an amazing fox interaction it's not. That's not how wildlife works. It's day after day after day. No, you have to leave cold. your camera at home to see the animal. <laughs> you do. You do. Uh, so, but that, that's what it is. And and I think that's what's going to be rewarded is like, wow, you saw that? Like, how did you see that? And it's like, no, it wasn't luck. I was out there for freaking 300 days in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think we're moving to um, bringing value. Like, like your content needs to like bring value or you need to show the behind the scenes of, I think showing how you got there is going to be bigger than how you got there. Like, mm-hmm. or like the, yeah. the final product It's just, I think that the behind the scenes and, and, and I'm pretty sure like, if you look at all the BBC documentaries for nature and stuff now, now they're all putting, it's not just BBC, it might be silverback, but they're putting the behind the scenes out for those. Like the ones on Netflix yeah. have behind the scenes, like full Very in their cool. episodes which is really cool. And those are actually from a photographer standpoint or, you know, cinematographer standpoint, it's cool to watch them using rigs and sh- you know, all the stuff they use yeah, to get the these capturing. shots or, yeah. yeah. So I do think the behind the scenes, which is why that hook of people lifting their camera up does so well. It's just like, Whoa, mm. this guy, that's what he looked like. And that's where he was. He was in a safari vehicle, you know, or on a boat or. Seth, believe it or not, I just came up with a golf analogy for this. Wow. Leave it to you. <laughs> I know everyone, you're impressed. But when Tiger Woods came out, he was a a four forerunner in athleticism. No one was doing what he was doing in terms of lifting, working at the gym, working at the game, and he went ahead leaps and bounds. He had a great career, but towards his end, people started doing that. That became the new golf. Now golfers for the most part are athletes. You think Dustin Johnson, he can dunk a basketball, you know, from right under the rim. Uh, Brooks Kepka is a linebacker. Like all these guys care about their fitness a ton. And then his, it just sort of evened out the playing field. I think that's kind of what's happening, but the people that put that extra part four, that extra step forward, that extra work, that extra, you know what? I've been out four days in a row 
it's raining today. I like, I don't want to go out again, but I'm going to like, those are the people that again, will the cream will rise to the top and no matter what field it is. Yeah. And what you were saying about going out every single day and how all those days where you don't get anything and on the one day you do, it reminds me of the, uh, it's the stone cutters creed or it's a quote mm-hmm. by Jacob Reese. Have you heard this one? I pulled it up so I didn't butcher it cause you were making me think of it. Um, quote goes when nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two. And I know that it was not that blow that did it, but all that had gone before. That's also in the San Antonio Spurs locker room. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that just kind of encapsulates that entire concept of... You, you're striking out or you're feeling like you're getting nowhere, you're getting nowhere, you're getting nowhere, but all that work isn't wasted because the day that you get your outcome, whatever that happens to be, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have come without all that nothingness. Not that, to, not that we have to list people out, but you see people on Instagram and you're like, oh, I know they go for it every day. Mm-hmm. You know, you can just yeah. tell. There's a difference between the occasional post and like, even if they're not. Oh, you can say that with me, dude, with whales. Like yeah. uh, the amount of freaking whale content I have. I mean, look at your, like, look at your content. I have so many of these little <laughs> SSDs. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's, and like, I get, I'm so tired. I, I, I wish I could find someone to edit whale content for me, but yeah, I just, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. But you people, people probably know, like I go out every day, but yeah. I, you can't say the same for any other. And that's why I have barely, I have like Africa that I was very fortunate to go to the Churchill with Seth. And now I went to Yellowstone and like, those are the, like the three, like, uh, land wildlife things I've done, but that's why I don't have tons of lions and tons of wolves and tons of, mm-hmm. right. you know, coyotes and all that stuff because I haven't done it, but I have, I go whale watching every single day and you can see that. Well, you just inadvertently put an ad out for a editor internship position yeah <laughs> you gotta be able to him. dub in whale sounds <laughs> or whale no. like blows and all that stuff no but seriously maybe somebody who's like we just talked <laughs> okay not even i don't need a uh, humpback songs i need oh like actual need? like I audio of whales tails dripping water and all that stuff <laughs> if you can do it i'm not good at it so if you could just do it as good as me that's great <laughs> Yeah, no. Well, we talked about this whole episode practicing. Maybe there's somebody out there who wants to practice with super high quality footage, right? Take it. Making some stuff. I think that's so. another thing I don't want to do is sit there and upload it online somewhere. Like, oh. it just sounds like the biggest hassle. I'd rather have 7,000 of these things <laughs> that never see the light of day. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's Dude, awesome. Yeah. I have some well. labeled footage. What does that even mean? How am I going to know what's in there? <laughs> Well, buddy, uh, we've got right. an hour and a half with you. That's a good yeah. one. It's our longest in a while. Um, Slater's a good, good friend. You're a good friend. I look forward to talking to you two to three times a week as per usual. Running ideas know, off Aaron, one another. All messed up. I think yeah. I talk to you two the most other than Haley. So um, There's something to be said for that too. Get somebody you can run ideas by. Somebody who may see something in a different perspective as you do. You know, who might give you honest feedback and objective opinion of how you could do something better or may reinforce the things you're doing right. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, back to that whole, that whole theme of growing together, there's enough cake for everyone, right? So oh, yeah, definitely. There's more than enough. So again, buddy, I look forward to seeing you wherever that may be, whether that's back in California. Come out. You guys got to come out. Yeah. I want to. It's after really- your trip. Come out. Did you guys sell your trip real quick? We got one spot left for Alaska. All right, well, one spot. book that trip someone. As of right now. So if you're listening, check that out. Link in the episode description. We have one spot left. Oh, I wish I could go on that. So, I can't swing it since we're going to Japan, but that's oh, cool. Poor you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. We'll see you All soon. All right, guys. Take Thanks for having me.